Hey everyone, we're at CES 2020 and I'm in CyberPower suite. This is the first visit we're doing for the show. Intel has a new NUC, but it's pretty interesting because it's basically a socketable mini computer in that it will socket into this baseboard and then you've got, and we've got B-roll of it, the proper computer. So it's got the CPU on it, the chipset, all that. And then the GPU will socket in separately, which makes this very interesting for a lot of reasons. So we're gonna be talking about this today. We've done a complete teardown of the CyberPower Knox Mini PC, which is what they're calling their version of the new NUC. I think it's the Ghost Canyon NUC is the actual code name for it by Intel. And then we've got a cooler master case we need to look at while we're at it. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Corsair Virtuoso RGB wireless gaming headset. The Corsair Virtuoso headset is comfort focused with a set of memory foam ear pads, headband, and lightweight construction. The Virtuoso wireless headphones use 50 millimeter drivers that range from 20 hertz to 40 kilohertz with a wireless connection that ranges up to 60 feet. Corsair also includes a detachable high quality microphone for voice comms. Learn more at the link in the description below. So first of all, I've done complete teardown here. I'm not sure that you'll see any other teardowns to quite this depth during the show, but we'll see. For the base specs, the units are shipping with a few different of the i9s. So there's an i9-9980 HK. Intel with the naming, always on point. So the HK is an eight core 16 thread processor, which I know, I know the 9980 eight core 16 thread doesn't make a lot of sense to me either, but that's the high end of it. For GPUs, obviously it does have the IGP. It's the same as the mobile part in that regard, but what this is really supposed to be is a socketable system. And the reason I actually thought it was really cool, and I think most of you will, even if you're not planning to buy one, uh, is because this whole computer builds just like this, where you have PCIe expansion slots in the back of a case. And we've got footage of all this stuff we can drop in, but PCIe expansion slots. So you drop in the computer expansion, you drop in the GPU, and then the baseboard goes in at the bottom. There's going to be a separate Cooler Master baseboard. It's, this is all prototype right now. So we're using the Intel one uh, reference baseboard. And you end up with something where there's no, no motherboard in the standard sense. So there's no mini ITX motherboard that you screw into the, into the case or anything like that. It all just comes in a card that slots in. So the way they're planning to sell the NUC is there's two SKUs. There's going to be the uh, NUC kit, and then there's going to be one that is, I think it's called the compute element. And so the bare bones version is just basically just the card. You have to buy the RAM, the power supply, the chassis. So the chassis typically would come with the NUC products, but not, not in the bare bones instance here. You would buy a separate chassis. And then in terms of fitment, it's no, no motherboard, ATX, ITX, any of that. It's just PCIe. So I just thought that was kind of neat, mostly because I'm not really sure that this is a, a potential future for this type of product, but socketable CPUs effectively in a, a baseboard has potential to go further than one CPU, one GPU. You could see a path where maybe you do something that's multiple computers within the same box, except in an extremely small form factor, as opposed to the traditional way you do multiple PCs in a small box by just having ITX and ATX on the same system. All right, so enough talking about the basic points of what they're trying to do. Let's look at some of the components. When I took this thing apart, the, I guess there's, it's a little bit tricky, but it's not too bad. So this is the top panel. Top panel has two fan cables for, I think it's 90 something mil fans at the top. These are Cooler Master fans because it's a Cooler Master chassis. So what CyberPower has in its suite is the Cooler Master version of the chassis. Intel has one as well. The Cooler Master chassis is a 7.5 liter solution. Intel's is supposed to be closer to five, I think. So Intel's will be limited at about an eight inch video card for the video card length. And then the Cooler Master chassis can go maybe 10.5 or so, pretty standard length. So really small box, but uh, the top of it's got your two fans that are currently configured as exhaust. And internally, so the GPU sits at the front. And in this instance, they've got a blower GPU, but you could configure whatever video card you want in there. It, it, traditionally, the, the, I guess the traditional understanding of blower cards is that they should help get air out of the case better than dual axial, but it kind of depends on the chassis. The Intel solution, this is the faceplate and what's left of what I took apart. So the Intel solution has got a small blower fan on it. And the way this one goes together is this uh, vapor chamber plus small 
VRM heatsink for the voltage regulator will mount onto the CPU and the chipset. So the chipset, the thermal pad's right there. The CPU is where the thermal paste is, residue is. And then you've got a fin stack connected to the vapor chamber. And then that sockets all into here. And the blower fan just pushes it straight out the top. And we've got, of course, footage of all that separately too. So pretty simple solution. Now, obviously the points of concern would be you're packing in a small computer behind a video card, which is potentially hot and it's a blower fan. There's not a ton of clearance, but from what I understand, the Cooler Master version of this baseboard for Cooler Master's version of the case is supposed to have a bit wider spacing between the two. So that should help a bit. And then the rest we'll figure out in thermal testing later. It's no point really, uh, trying to look at it any further than that right now because we just we don't know really how much power the system proper is drawing we know kind of, kind of what the video cards are drawing but anyway that's the basics of the assembly i think for the pcb i've taken photos for buildzoid in case he wants to do a pcb analysis including the baseboard but it's all pretty simple so the baseboard can support one uh, m.2 and it does say pcie ssd only it can support the video card and then it's got the actual NUC unit plugging into it so you've got by 16 from the CPU coming into the by 16 slot. So what I'm curious about is how do you distribute by 16 in and by 16 out between a by 16 video card and an SSD? And the answers would be either multiplexing, I guess, or don't load both of them at 100% all the time, in which case you should have enough bandwidth to go between the two as long as it switches between them uh, based on load periods. So I don't know, we'll talk to an Intel engineer about that. Uh, for the rest of it, it's all pretty simple. SODIMS for the memory, you are supposed to buy your own, but you can get SODIMS for that. The cooling solution, this entire unit is prepackaged by Intel, so that doesn't change. Uh, the rest of it is semi-modular. Let me check my notes for the rest. So the Intel kit, the Intel version of the case, the five liter one, Supports an eight-inch GPU, as like I said, it's uh, let's see, it comes with a 500 watt internal power supply. The Element does not include a power supply; you'd have to buy one. They are two M.2 slots for both the Compute Element and the uh, the kit, but RAID zero and one are only supported on the kit and not the Element, at least based on Intel's spec sheet they provided us. There's no OS included, which is actually really interesting. We don't really typically see that. I guess maybe with the proliferation of free Windows 10, that's how it goes. And then for the sizing, so the NUC Extreme chassis, which is the other one that we don't have here today, but we'll look at later in the show, that chassis is 238 by 216 by 96 millimeters, or if you prefer 9.4 by 8.5 by 3.8 inches. Uh, it, the power supply they include, if you get the one with the power supply, is a six and an eight pin PCIe. So you've got good enough PCIe support, 225 watts or so. The element is supposed to be probably about $1,500. The Knox Mini PC that we're looking at from CyberPower, so I should say the element doesn't include everything to be really clear about that. You'd have to buy the other parts still. The CyberPower one, which does include everything, is looking at about $2,670. And that is including the 2080 Ti and an 850 watt power supply, which to Cooler Master's credit, it's an awful lot of hardware in an extremely small box. So a lot of the mini ITX cases we work with, I mean, they, they would be bigger than this. So pretty interesting stuff, but that's, I think we'll probably cut it there just for sake of time. That's the Intel Ghost Canyon NUC or the Knox Mini PC as by CyberPower. We will leave additional information uh, in the description below if we get time to write up the articles. Otherwise, we'll have some later coverage during the show from Cooler Master Suite talking more about the case and from Intel Suite, hopefully speaking with some of the engineers about how they're doing uh, the PCIe routing and lane assignment, because that's really interesting. But I think the whole idea of socketable computer is what I find most compelling or interesting, especially once you start getting into the discussion of streaming PCs and main gaming PCs. But we'll talk about that more later. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. I'll see you all next time.